His life meaning was yanked right out from under him. And that something else could not carry the weight of Thomas's meaning of life. In your quest to determine the purpose of your life, have you gone all in for a cause? In, in wanting to know what is this all about? What, is, what am I here for? If your eight-year-old's in the backseat of the car on that eight-hour trip from Orlando and he says, Dad, what's the meaning of life? How would you answer that question? Would you say, well, the meaning of life, son, is found in the political party that you give yourself to. It's found in supporting the candidate of your choice. It's found in your vocation. You're, you're, you're put here to work. It's found in a relationship. You're put here to be connected to it, to that one special other person that God has for you. That's the meaning of life. We're here to, to start a legacy or to continue on a family legacy. And what's the meaning of your life? Have you been there where you've been all in for a cause? Whatever your life's meaning may be or may have been, right here, Thomas knew his. And he was all in. And don't miss the fact that Thomas was all in for Jesus. Right? What he understood about Jesus. What he thought was true about Jesus and his cause. So for Thomas... The meaning of his life was found in service to Jesus as he understood Jesus to be even to the point of death for them both. And he wanted other people to find their meaning in that too. For a little bit he did. Because Jesus in John chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14 started talking weird about his future. He started talking things like, hey guys, I'm going to get betrayed by one of you dudes, as it turns out. Hey, guys, I'm going to be arrested. Hey, guys, I'm going to be tried. Hey, guys, I'm going to be crucified. Hey, guys, I'm going to be buried. Hey, guys, I'm going to be resurrected. And none of it was making any sense to Thomas, whose whole meaning of his life was tied to Jesus being a political king. So in John chapter 14, Jesus was elaborating a little bit, if you will, on what the future was going to be. Look at John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4 with me. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready... I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the, to where I'm going. You know the way to where I am going. Now, this is crazy talk for a political Messiah. This is not the talk of an earthly king who's going to overthrow Caesar and establish Israel as a nation. This is the talk of something different. And it's completely unraveling Thomas's worldview and the meaning of his life. And you can tell in verse five, and when Thomas again speaks and responds, look at John 14, verse five. Thomas says, no, we don't know, Lord. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Now, do you hear the difference in, in the words of Thomas's statement here in chapter 14, verse 5, and chapter 11, verse 16, right? This is a completely different Thomas than the one just three chapters earlier. Jesus, as Thomas has understood him to be, was the meaning of life for Thomas in chapter 11. Jesus, I'm going to die with you, and you're going to die, and this is my purpose. This is my cause. But now here in 14... When the Jesus he thought he knew started talking about death and started talking about heaven, Thomas becomes bewildered and he's indignant toward the one for whom had been his very purpose for existence. He's completely turned the tables on Jesus because the meaning of Thomas's life is becoming completely unraveled.